me take you somewhere And there's something new language that everyone needs to learn Said the right pronunciation and use the right destination So express yourself It's Diction Avenue Okay, wake up to the world with vision They say nation get perish without the vision In Diction Avenue, we got a mission, vision To build tomorrow future Speak with good English, it's our culture We got qualified teachers, good facilities To build confidence in our students Don't be told, go witness it, treasure you can't measure Welcome to the world Good evening to you and welcome to today's edition of Diction Avenue. As we always say, this is the show where you learn to speak right, sound right and sound English. My name is Abigail Anaba and I'm your host on the show today. And just a quick roundup, rundown of what you expect on Diction Avenue today. Well, right after this, we'll be giving you the question of the day, after which we'll be having our conversation of the day, and we will be continuing our discussion on loud and faint parts of words. Afterwards, we'll be having stories that teach, and of course, on the show today, we have a school, uh, two pupils from Mind Builder School who will be making a presentation. Well, that's something to look forward to on the show today. We're going to start off right now by looking at our question of the day. And we will be discussing parts of the body today, looking at the correct way of pronouncing various parts of the body. And to kick that off, we'll take our question of the day. And what is the question? You are going to listen to a pronunciation and tell me which of these two are correct listen to the pronunciation and tell me which two of the two are correct a or b is this part of the body you're looking at in the picture is that called nostril or is it called nostril what do you think is that part of the body called your nostril or is it called your nostril? That's our question of the day. And you have an opportunity to answer that question. All you have to do is send your answer to the number 0805-584-9525. And the question is, what is this part of the body called? Is it called nostril or is it called nostril? What do you think? Well, as you send in your answer, do not forget to include your name and where you are texting us from. We need that information, very important. Again, the number is on your screen, so go right ahead and provide the answer to the question. And as I said at the beginning of the show, we're looking at loud and faint parts of words today. We've been discussing loud and faint parts of words all through February, and we're continuing that conversation about rounding it off anyway well what are loud and faint parts of words well this is our way of discussing what you would call word stress and what is this all about what is word stress it is defined as the clarity with which you say one syllable or more in a word that's what word stress is and so when we're talking about loud and faint parts of words we're talking about the clarity how clear you say one syllable or more in a word so um, the loud and faint parts of words has to do with syllables 
And of course, you know that in the English language, every word is made up of syllables. You have words with one, two, as many as 19 syllables for the longest word in the dictionary. And so how do you say certain parts of the word? You do not just say all the words flat, all the syllables in the same accent. You do not give the same accent to all the syllables. And so one or more syllables are said louder than the others. And when you do that, we say you find word stress to that word. And in your dictionary, you will find what we refer to as stress marks. These stress marks indicate to a person where the loud or the faint part of the word is. So particularly, we'll pay attention to the, what we call the high set accent mark. So the high set accent mark is placed at the syllable just before the, um, it's placed just before the syllable that carries the accent mark. So you, once you see the high set accent mark, it tells you say the syllable loud and clear. And when we talk about saying a syllable loud and clear, it means that you are given the vowel sound its full realization. Because ordinarily when you're pronouncing words, um, you use the vowels and the consonant sounds. In faint syllables, you do not say the vowel sounds loud and clear. And consonants are soundless. It's actually the vowels that give the consonants their sound. So when you say a vowel loud and clear, that means that you're applying more clarity to that particular syllable. And that's what word stress is all about. Once you give it that clarity, then you're applying word stress. You're saying that part of the word loud. Right? The difference between our native languages, especially here in Nigeria, and the English language is that we do not have this word stress, this entire phenomenon of word stress in our languages because it doesn't work the same way as the English language works. And so we, it is something that we need to learn to do as we speak. We need to learn the music of the English language. And it is this application of loud and faint that creates the music of English. That's what creates the rhythm. And we're going to see that applied in words that describe parts of the body. Uh, we have 10 different words that we're going to learn how to say today. On the show today, we're going to learn 10 different words. So if you are um, a student or a science teacher and you have been teaching parts of the body, um, and we're not talking about the usual parts of the body, well, if you have been taking lessons on parts of the body, it's time for you to listen up and hear how those different parts of the body are pronounced. So let's start with the first two words that we have for today. And the first word we have is diaphragm. Diaphragm. An interesting word. Um, I remember when I was in school, uh, my science teacher used to say diaphragm for this word, but it's not frame, it's from. So it's diaphragm. That's how you pronounce that word, diaphragm. And the next word under it, also an interesting word, pronounced urethra. 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 Not uretra which is uh, what most people say, but urethra, urethra. You can see um, from the high set accent mark on the second syllable for that word, telling you that the first syllable, you do not give the um, vowel sound there, or you do not give it such a full realization. Just go y, y, re, y, re, y, re, you re and then the final syllable is definitely faint you can see the a there represented by the schwa so you go you re through you re through because you see the teeth there which is the th sound which is quite a difficult sound to articulate but you can keep trying and you'll be able to get it correctly the th 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 
sound which is produced by your placing your tongue between the upper and lower teeth just like that and then you try to force air out then you get so you go urethra urethra and that's how you pronounce that word well we move on to the next two words in the list and uh, these are also interesting body parts uh, the next we have is bronchi 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 i hope nobody says bronchi for this word that's the h there gives it a k sound so you go bronchi bronchi and the next which refers to a part of the eye is the cornea cornea well what the variation i've heard for the pronunciation of this word from the teachers is pronouncing it as cornea but no it's not cornea there's an or in the spelling of that word and the letters or in that word give you the sound or so you go call call and then the ea gives you the ear sound so cornea cornea so the white part of your eye the white part of your eye is the cornea cornea and that's how you pronounce um, that body part so we've taken four body parts so far we've taken the diaphragm we've taken the urethra and now bronchi and cornea uh, there's a sound there in bronchi which i want you to also take note of the sound that looks like the letter n but it's not just the letter n Brung, mm, mm, that's how that sound is said um, I usually tell uh, students that those who are from um, Eastern Nigeria have it easier saying this sound because it's contained it's one of the sounds in their native language mm, mm. so you have people who have names like um, Isong right e song the final ng has that sound and if you add a schwa at the end it gives you so bronchi that's that's the that word we move on to oh this is a very interesting body part because it has caused a lot of confusion in several classes well we will bring an end to that confusion today by pronouncing this body part correctly it is spelled o e s o p h a g u s and how is it pronounced esophagus 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 there you have it esophagus some people go o e esophagus some go o esophagus but no it's e the o and the e gives you one sound e so esophagus esophagus the second syllable carries the loud is the loud part of the word the second syllable is a loud part and every other syllable in that word is faint so esophagus it sounds like you just say esophagus 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 right and the next word you have there is larynx 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 so there you have it another part and the larynx has something to do with speech I think it's a part of the body that concerns itself with speech just as the esophagus is um, seriously what is the esophagus I'm sure you can find out now let's move on to the next two parts of the body. We've done six and we have four more to go. And this is a very easy one, the next one we're about to take. Skeleton. 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 Uh, one thing I've noticed with pronunciation of this is that some go skeleton, trying to give the O there a full realization but it doesn't have a full realization so it's not skeleton it's skeleton 
tun, tun. You can see from the transcription there that in certain instances, you just go tun without even acknowledging the u at all. And so that's how uh, the, so when you have a saying like, do you have skeletons in your cupboard? Skeleton, skeleton, and not skele or skeleton, no. And the final word we have here is pancreas. Again, you see that sound ng, in that word. And you notice how that sound occurs. In the medial position, it would always occur before the sound k. If there's an N before a K, it usually will give you the ng sound. So pan, pancreas, pancreas. And that's how you pronounce that word. And our final two words for today are abdomen, 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 or abdomen. Now, so take note of the two pronunciations. You either place the loud part is either the first syllable or the second syllable. But the pronunciation changes based on uh, where the loud part of the word is. So it's either abdomen or abdomen. So either of the pronunciations is correct. And the final, final word is eyebrow. I've often heard makeup artists say eyebrow for this word. No, it's not bro, it's brow. So eyebrow. That's how you pronounce that word. So there you have it, 10 body parts that we've taken on Diction Avenue today. And I'm sure you're just going to keep practice, 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 which is what we always say here. If you keep using the words and you get used to saying them correct, then you will have improved your spoken English. Let's not forget that at the beginning of the show, we gave up a question. And yes, I have plenty, plenty, plenty answers that have come in so far. And we will be looking at the phone lines in just a bit, but that's the question again. Listen to the pronunciation and choose which, of the, which is correct, A or B. And the pronunciation is nostril or nostril. Which do you think is correct? Send your answer to 0805 584 9525. And I'll be looking at the phone lines in just a bit, but that will be after the break, and we will be taking a short break now for Stories to Teach. And when we come back from that break, we'll be meeting the two pupils from Mind Builder School, and they'll be making their presentation on loud and faint parts of words. Don't go away. It's reading time. Damien, the determined furry bear. Miss Rollins had said it was going to be an exciting lesson, and indeed it was. After writing out the names of the different parts of the body on the board, Miss Rawlings taught the class a song. Damien liked the song, he sang along excitedly with the whole class, and he was super sure he had mastered it. He waited eagerly to hear the closing bell so he could go home and sing it to his mom. Sadly though, when Damien arrived home that afternoon, the little bear realized that he couldn't remember the song anymore. Oh no, he cried. I can't remember the song, Mom. It's somewhere in my head, he said, rubbing his head vigorously. But I just can't remember it. Damien was sad and confused. How could I have forgotten so soon, he wondered. Mama Bear told him not to bother and that he would remember the song some other day, maybe not today. Or he could ask his teacher when he got back to school. But Damien was not ready to give up. He kept thinking and thinking and thinking. He tried to hum the song using the body parts he knew. Suddenly, it came back. Mama, Mama, I remember it. 
You do? His mother exclaimed happily. That's my boy. I knew you would remember. Your determination has paid off. Well done, Damien. Please sing it to me. I want to hear it. And so Damien cheerfully sang to his mom the new song he had learned that day at school. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose, head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. The end. Ecom.ng, 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 ecom.ng. Your speaking English website, powered by Institute of Certified Communicators. Visit www.ecom.ng and subscribe for your spoken English updates now. Your accent is your asset. Welcome back, and that story was on. Damien the fluffy bear and you could see how Damien learns to say his body parts he just repeated the song that his teacher taught him but he was determined and that is his determination paid off because he tried to remember he tried hard until he got it right and right in the studios here with me I have two people who are determined to make their presentation. Isn't that so? Oni and Camilla are determined to make their presentation today. And Oni and Camilla are from Mind Builder School. I'm determined to remember that name. Mind Builder School or Molly Phase 2. And we are going to start with Camilla, right? And Camilla is going to make her presentation. So go right ahead, Camilla. Good day everyone, my name is Camilla Kamaldin. I'm a pupil of Mind Builder School. I'm a primary school better. I'm here to present my spoken English 2.2 in a 2. Loud and faint part of words. Loud part of words. Every English word that has more than one syllable has a loud part and a faint part. You must remember this as you read. When you see such a word, say one part out loud so that it can be clearly heard. Say the second part of the word as if we were whispering. This time, you will learn how to apply this style of plain word parts to various words that have two syllables. Saying a part of word out loud means you to say the vowel on that part of word clearly. Do you should remember some vowel sounds we have learnt? Letter A is a vowel. It has two main sounds, A and A. If letter A is to occur on the loud side of the word, we will say the sound of the letter loud and clear. For example, chapter. The loud part of word is the first part of word. So we say that part loud and clear. Chap, chap, chapter, chapter. Now, let's go to the word of examples and then I'll see loud parts of more CH words having two syllables. Welcome to our word of examples where we see loud parts of more CH words having two syllables. Cheater. China, chopper, channel, changer, chester, children, chanter, chatter, chaser, cheating. Thank you. Brain part of words. In our last lesson, we learned that every English word that has more than one syllable has a lot of parts and the theme part. 
You must remember this as you read. When you see such a word, say one part out loud so that it can be clearly heard. Say the second part of word as say very whispered. Say the part of word faintly, may dropping the vowel on that part of word. Say Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Camilla. You've made it very clear to us that loud parts of words should be said out loud, whereas the faint parts should be whispered, right? Fantastic, great job. I, I love the examples that you gave. Now let's turn to Oye, and Oye also has a presentation, determined, right? Yes. Go right ahead. Good day, everyone. My name is Oye Ruadada. I'm a pupil of Mind Builder School in Primary 5 Alpha. Today, we're going to talk about loud and thin parts of words. Every word in English is made up of parts. Some are loud and some are faint. The loud part of a word is said out clearly by seeing the consonants and the vowel sounds in it. We drop the vowel when we want to say the faint part of a word. Parts of a word that are said out loud depend on the number of syllables a word has. If a word has just one syllable, if a word has just one syllable, it could be said out loud or faint, depending on the type of word it is. If a word has two, three, four, or sometimes five syllables, one syllable will be said out loud while the others will be faint. But is it possible to know the faint part and the loud part of a word? Yes. Just as possible to follow a map while driving to know which way to turn. The map we use here is our dictionary, and the signs are what we call axiom marks. Phoneticians tell us that there are three axiom marks the high set axiom mark, the low set axiom mark, and the zero axiom mark. These three axiom marks determine on how we say words. The high set axiom mark and the low set axiom mark are said in almost the same way. So, for the purpose of clarity, we should describe them as loud accent marks. While the zero accent marks should be described as faint accent marks. Today, we're going to only focus on two of the three accent marks. The loud accent mark is said before the loud part of a word, while the zero accent mark is said with the schwa. Uh, uh. Some examples are motion, lotion, audience, influence, victor, doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much for those examples that you gave and how you explained clearly what loud and faint parts of words are. Reinforcing my lesson today on loud and faint parts of words. Our time is far spent, but we just have a few seconds left to give the answer to our question of the day. And earlier we had asked, which of these two are correct? Do you say nostril or do you say nostril? Is it A or B? Well. The correct answer to that question is A. You say nostril. You do not say nostril. So if you've been saying nostril, stop. It's time to change, to speak right, sound right, and say nostril. And that's how we come to the end of the show for today. I want to say a big thank you to Camilla and to Oni for joining me on the show today and for making it a very interesting one. Next week, we'll be with you again and we'll learn more about the English language. And until I come your way then, my name is Abigail and I'll see you next week. Let me take you somewhere, and there's something new. Something new. Why English is spoken so good? It's Dishon Avenue. Dishon Avenue. And this is the word where English language is taught, the official language that everyone.